Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to equally export data into multiple CSV files in SSIS. So in this video, we will see how we can equally export data into multiple CSV files from SQL Server and we can equally export the data into n number of files using this particular method. So let's jump to the demo. I got a SQL Server 2019 instance and in the work database, I got a table, email table here and if I show you the data, so it contains 1000 records. So let me remove the top 1000 clause from here and rerun the query so it contains 1000 records okay so let me try to export this data into five equal csv files okay so what we can do here that we can use the entire function that i already used in the last video but here i will be using it differently so i want to export into five files so i can use the entire five over order by a column name so column name is email id here and I can call this particular column as part okay so this is how it can just create the five parts okay so if you see the part column here so you will see that the five parts equal parts have been created okay so now we will use this particular method in another query okay so let me do one thing so the first thing that we will do that we will create an staging table with the email id and the part column in it and then we will join back the staging table with the email table and then we will pass the part number to the query and the SSIS package will export the data accordingly. So let me do one thing that let me copy this particular code from here and paste it here and I will share all the code with you so that you can use it in your environment as well. So in this particular line we are checking if temp underscore email table exists. Okay, so if it exists then drop the table, drop table temp underscore email. Okay, and now what we will do we will select the email id column from here and then we will create a new column part column which will be created using the entire function from email table okay and now what we will do we will create a new table here into temp underscore email okay so now what this particular code will do it will create a new table with a column email id and part in it okay and then what we will do that we will create a clustered index on the email id column cluster index ix underscore i can call it pk primary key on temp email and the column name will be email underscore id okay and then we will create a non clustered index here on the part column so that the data will be fast quickly okay from the table so i can just remove the cluster from here and i can call it as part and then the column name will be the part okay so this is what we are doing here that first we are going to drop the table we are going to create a table create a cluster index and then create a non cluster index okay and now let me show you what kind of data the temporary table will contain temp underscore email so it contains just email id and the five equal parts okay so whatever value you will pass those number of parts will be created here now we will use a for each loop container with ADO enumerator and we will select the distinct value of the part. So I can write a query like select distinct part from temp underscore email. Okay. So it will return you the five parts. Okay. So this is good. Now let me open the SSIS package here. And first of all, let me just create two variables here. The first variable will be part and then the second variable will be the OBJ part because it will contain the full result set and the data type will be object here okay now the first task that i want to drag and drop is the execute sql task where i will create this particular temporary table the staging table actually temp email table so let me just call this particular task as create staging tables and then right click and configure this one create a new connection here and the connection will connect to the work database and now under SQL statement I can simply copy this particular query actually cut this one and I can paste it here click OK OK now in the second task I will select the distinct values from the temp underscore email table so I can call this one as get part values OK and I can configure this one I will select the connection as to the work database and under SQL statement I can use this particular query select distinct part from the table click OK now under result set I will set it to full result set because more than one value will be returned 
and now under result set I will click on add and the result set name will be 0 and the object name will be the obj name so that's good now I can click on ok now here I will use a for each loop container with ADO enumerator and then I can look through all the parts and then it will generate the CSV files according to the number of parts now I can connect the execute SQL task with the for each loop container and then I can configure the for each loop container here now I can go to the collection and from the enumerator type I will select the for each loop ADO enumerator under ADO object name I will select the object variable here and under variable mapping I will select the part SSIS variable here now I can click on OK so this has been created now let me just use the data flow task because I am going to export the data to a CSV file now I can configure the data flow task and because we are going to read the data from a SQL server table so we will be using the OLEDB source here we need to select all data from the email table joining it a dot start from email a joining it with the temp email table b on a dot email underscore id equal to b dot email underscore id where b dot part equal to 1 so we will pass this value like 1 or 2 or 3 using the SSIS variable so it will be dynamic so it's saying temp email is not reorganized join operation inner oh I missed the join here join keyword okay so this is how it will select all data from the email table and we will pass the part value so right now if you see we have 1000 records in the email table but it has written just 200 records because we are going to export the data to the five equal parts so I can copy this query from here and I can open the SSIS package and I actually need to create a SQL query SSIS variable here SQL query and the data type will be a string and I can open the expression here double quote paste the value and the double quote now instead of hard coded value 1 we will pass the part column here double quote plus plus double quote and then I can just drag and drop the part SSIS variable here because the part SSIS variable is of integer type so I need to type pass it to a string so I can write dt underscore w str comma 12 okay so now this is good now the value of the part will be passed to this particular SQL query now I can click on ok and now inside the data flow task I will configure the OLEDB source and under data access mode I will select SQL command from variable and now I will select the SQL query from here now if I click on column so it will show me all the columns those will be exported and I can click on ok now I can use a flat file destination here because I want to export the data to a CSV file and then I can connect the OLEDB source with the flat file destination now I want to export the data to the D files location so let me open the D files location so this is the location where I want to export the data so I can create an empty file for now here email underscore one dot CS so all files like email underscore one email underscore two email underscore three will be created here so now I can go back to the SSIS package and I can configure the flat file destination click new to create a new flat file connection manager click OK and I can call this connection manager as email and I can browse the file that I just created CSV files email underscore one open column names in the first data row and if I go to the advanced so all columns are here so this seems good I can click on OK and then I can check the mapping so the all input columns have been mapped with the destination column so this is good and now I can click on OK so as of now this flat file connection manager is hard coded and it's not dynamic so I need to make it dynamic so what I can do I can just go to the properties of it and go to the expressions and if I check the properties here so there is a connection string property and I can click on the expressions here maximize it now I can go back to the location and I can copy the name of the file to be exported and I can copy the value from here double quote paste the value and the double quote so this is the location of the file that will be generated like de files email underscore one dot csv if you click on the evaluate expression so it is saying that if a backslash is needed in the string use a double backslash okay so one backslash is not allowed here so we need to use the double backslash here so this is fine now if you click on evaluate expression so the final value of the file will be email underscore one dot csv now because this one value is hard coded here and we want to replace it with a part variable because the value of the part will change for each iteration of the for each loop container so the name of the file will be changed as well so instead of one I can type double quote plus plus double quote 
and then we can just drag and drop the part variable here I think we just did it uh, you know a minute ago so same thing we need to do here type cast it to a string dt underscore w str comma 12 and click on evaluate expression so now the value of the part is coming from the SSIS variable so this has made the connection string as dynamic now I can click on ok ok so our SSIS package is ready to be run and I can click on start and the package should run alright so it seems like the package got filled here package execution completed and if you go to the view and check the output window here so it is saying that the type of value int 64 being assigned to variable part differs from the current variable type so the current variable type is int 32 and we are assigning a value int 64 to it okay so that's why it's not taking the value to it so now what we need to do what is actually happening if you check the temp underscore email table sp underscore help temp underscore email so the part column should be of int 64 type yeah so you can see that the part column is of type big int and the SSIS variable that we have declared it is of integer type so now we have two options either we can change the int 32 to int 64 and it will work or what we can do we can just type cast this value to the integer so like how we can type cast it cast part as int as part okay so now this will convert the value from big into the integer okay so this is how it got converted and I can maybe write order by part okay so now this value got converted to the int 32 so it should be fine now I can copy this value from here and I can just put the value here click ok ok and now you can rerun the SSIS package so this time the package ran fine and now if you go back to the D files location so now you can see that five files got generated here and for example if you check the data in one of the file so there should be 200 records yeah so there are 201 lines here and the first line is the header line so that's why the actual data is 200 lines and because there are 1000 records in the file and we divided it into five equal parts so that's why each part contains the 200 records so I think this is good so let me delete these five files from here and now let me go back to the SSIS package and just try to export the data into 20 equal CSV files so what we need to do we just need to change the value 5 to 20 here and that should be ok and now if I rerun the SSIS package then the data will be exported to 20 equal CSV files here ok so the package ran fine and if you go back to the D files location so now you can see that 20 equal files got generated here and and each file should contain 50 records in it so now you can see that there are total 51 lines and the first line is the header information so that's why the actual data is the 50 records in each file so I think this is how you can just equally export the data into multiple CSV files using SSIS so that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video thank you so much